7 to 16. <coughs> Judges 2, verse 7, 7 to 16. And I'll read that very quickly. Judges 2, verse 7 to 16. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of the his inheritance in Timat Eris, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gaash. And also all that generation, note, all that generation, Joshua's generation, yeah. they all died, were gathered unto their fathers, gathered unto their fathers, mean they died. Mm. And there arose a what? Another generation. After them, the other generation. See, the other generation always seems to dilute. Mm -hmm. Never seems to understand the foundation of the establishment or the order. Mm -hmm. And when they come, they just dilute everything. Mm -hmm. The next generation. But praise God, he has a way. He has a way of raising up people within the generation that is diluted yeah that has diluted and basically perverted their, their their way their life god has a way of raising up people Amen. hallelujah when the early church the apostles of the early church and all those first generation christians when they died then the next generation started doing less and less and less and less until we come down to our generation and what we have inherited is kind of a diluted kind of gospel. It's all so mixed up, so confused. But God, he knows how to reserve the best for last. Hallelujah, praise God. When the devil thinks that he has won, God knows how to basically just come right in and just take the smile of the devil's face, to wipe off that smile of yes. his face. Hallelujah. So he thinks that he's having his own way. You yes. see what he's going on with today? Mm -hmm. And all kinds of laws that are being passed. Yes. And all the government and David Cameron. We don't, we don't speak against our leaders, but Peter said, judge for yourself. Mm -hmm. Whether we should obey God or man. Right. That's right. And that's what we've got to say today. Mm -hmm. We must know what the word of God says. Israel, they followed other gods, they listened to other people, and they found themselves away from God, and the enemies that they basically associated themselves with and worshipping their gods, God turned those same enemies against them. They're serving their gods, but they're enemies, they don't like them. If you turn around and start serving the gods of this world today, serve the, the, the secular gods of the world, they'll turn around. And use you as their footstool, as their yeah, doormat, yeah, and wipe their yeah, feet on you. Yeah. That's what the enemy wants. Remember when they bound Samson yeah, and blinded him? Yeah. What did they do? Make sport out of him. Yeah. And they laughed at him, and they mocked him, and they teased him. Yeah. Samson, one of the judges. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy wants to do with us. <coughs> they want to come and give us all kind of perverted laws. Yes. What kind of a, a man in his right mind can come and say that he can change marital laws? When God instituted it with our first parents, way back in the Garden of Eden, yeah. Adam and Eve, yeah. and a man just come, yeah. just born the other day, and think that he can come and change God's law with a stroke of a pen, they're crazy. The heart of their mind, they think they're getting away with it. They do. But God will they do. judge them. They do. So we just have to pray for them that they wake up and open their eyes. Because no man can turn around and say, we can basically make marriage free for one and all and, and, and kind of all kinds of a perversion going on. This is God's business that you're messing about That's with. right, that's right. That's and God is very jealous of the family. God loves the family. That's the first institution that he gave us is the family, even before the church. God took 
two people married them. That's right. He did not wait till the world was populated and then somebody to marry Adam and Eve, one of their, ch their children to marry them. God did it himself and show as an example, just like Jesus came and was baptized, showing us the example to follow. That's right. So we have to pray for them. Yeah. Pray for every, everyone that is corrupt in their way and think they're doing their own thing and believe that there is no God. And Israel wasn't serving God. They were serving all the idol gods. Mm. But we saw what happened. They were impoverished, they were downtrodden, they were oppressed, they were afflicted. And they still have today. And even today, mm -hmm. afflicted because they turned away from God. Yes, so let's get back to the scripture. Verse 10 tells us about after that generation, Joshua's generation died. We'll read it, verse 10. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Baalim. They served the Baals of the nations around. Lifeless idols that the people called upon. That's what Israel was reduced to. Verse 12. And they forsook, you see, they forsook, they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them. The people round about them. We've got to be careful of the people round about us who don't worship our God that we do not allow them to dissuade us from serving God. If don't allow them to pollute and contaminate us. We have got to stand up and be counted for God. Regardless of the pressure that they may apply to us, we cannot bow because we know the truth. They may not know the truth, but we know the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So buy the truth and sell it not, the Bible says. Don't let go of it. Don't trade it. And what they do, did they do? They bowed themselves unto them and provoke the Lord to anger. And they forsook. See the word again, forsook. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asherah. And the anger of the Lord was out against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of what? God himself delivered them. He handed them over into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. When they went before their enemies, when they were serving God, their enemies would always be defeated. God would always give them, give them the victory. But now they turn their backs on the Lord God. When they go before their enemy, they are defeated. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. I don't want the hand of God against me. No. And the Lord, as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn unto them, that they were greatly distressed. And they were greatly distressed. Okay, Caleb? Yeah. They were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up what? Judges. That's what we're looking at. So we are looking at why judges? Why? We sin because of the rebellion, the sin of God's people. So God, in his mercy, when they cried out to him, he raised up judges or deliverers. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And it goes on to say, and yet they would not hearken, they would not listen unto the judges. Still rebellious. But they went to whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. They did not follow the good tradition of their fathers in serving the Lord. And when the Lord raised up and when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge. The Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. 
for it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. So even though they turn against God, God in his mercy, when he see their suffering and they start to cry out to him, God's heart of mercy and compassion moves toward them. And God would say, yes, I have got to do something. I know <coughs> that they're going to soon go back into rebellion and in, in, into sin. But nevertheless, God would raise them up yes, a judge. Yes. Every time they cried out to him, mm -hmm. he raised up a judge. Mm -hmm. And like I said, Othniel was the first judge. But tonight, we're going to be looking a little closer at one of the judges. And this is the, I think he is the eighth judge. I think he, yes, he is the eighth judge of Israel. Remember I said there are 14 judges? Yes. He is the eighth judge. I think I'll just go through a list of, of some of them. The first one was Othniel, Caleb's brother. The second judge was Eod, E-H-U-D, Eod. And he was a left-handed man. The Bible's pointed that out. He was a left-handed man. And he was very skillful with his left hand. Caleb over there, Caleb is left-handed. He was a left-handed man. I don't know why God said he uh, pointed it out that he was left-handed and not right-handed. In other words, you know, he maybe have some, you know, I do not know. You know, but you know most people are right-handed. Most people are right-handed, but God wants us to know. This man was left-handed, so maybe he might have a little bit of a problem. You know, I'm not saying the left-handed person have a problem, but it's not the norm for somebody to be right-handed. I mean left-handed, but right-handed. So God is saying, I'll choose whosoever I will, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Maybe that's what he's saying, I do not know. But it pointed out that he was left-handed, and that's the second judge. The other one was the third call, um, Shamgar, S-H-A-N-G-A-R, Shamgar. A lot is not said about him. It just only said that he was the third judge, basically. And the fourth judge was Deborah. And her, her leadership was in conjunction, or uh, in partnership with Barak, the general of the army. His name was Barak. So it was the two of them that worked together, Deborah and Barak. But Deborah was the leading judge. Yeah, the leading judge between the two of them. And then the, the fifth judge is Gideon that we know so much about. We know so much about Gideon. But we will we, we look at Jephthah. And uh, you can start looking in the Bible at Jephthah. Jephthah. Judges chapter 11, 1 to 3. Judges 11, 1 to 3. His name, Jephthah, actually means to release, to open. Can we say release? release. Re can we say open? open? So Jephthah means to release. It means to open. It also means whom God sets free or the breaker through. Whom God sets free. And does the Bible say whom God sets free is free indeed? Mm -hmm. If the Son, if the Son shall set you free, you're free indeed. Yes, yes. Whom God sets free. And it also means breaker free. Breaker free. Mm -hmm. Breaker free. This is a man who breaks free. Mm -hmm. But we want to look at his life. We want to look at his birth. His birth and rejection. Judges chapter. If anyone wants to stop me and ask any question, that's fine. We'd like to do a Bible study. So Judges chapter 11, 1 and 3. So we're looking at his birth. And we're looking at also his rejection. You've got it all on that, that list there. You've got it on your paper. I've outlined it for you, so... You can even go through that in your own time, study, recap on it. It's all there with all the verses. So we'll read from verse 1 of Judges chapter 11. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot. You hear that? His mother was a... And Gilead begot Jephthah. So he was a Gileadite, his father also, his name was Gilead. The father's name is Gilead, and he's a Gileadite. He's 
from the region uh, of Gilead. Of Gilead. He's an Israelite, but it's a tribe. It's a tribe. I'm not talking like the, the, the 12 tribe itself, but within the tribes, you have family clans. Just like you have Asaph, the family of Asaph, they were the worship leaders and musicians, but they were Asaph, the family. So this is a family line, and it will be a, a mega family, a mega family, a big family that, was, that, that are called the Gileadites. So even the dad's name is associated with the clan. Gilead. Are we understanding that? Yeah, yeah. Gilead. It's like saying that, um, I don't know where you come from in Jamaica. No, I'm, I'm from Nevis. All right, where you from Nevis? <laughs> <laughs> All right, where you're from Nevis. Okay, so where are you from in Nevis? I'm Cutting Ground. Cutting Ground, mm -hmm. okay. So you are from Cutting Ground, mm -hmm. and you could have a people from Cutting Ground called the Cutting Ground people, Cutting Ground, and your dad is called Cutting Ground, oh. from Cutting Ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, get that? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's associated yeah. with the people and associated with the the city where you're living. Okay. So the father even has the name. So true and true is a Gileadite okay. <laughs> and, a, and an Israelite at the same time. Verse 2, and uh, Gilead's wife, that's his father, that's Jephthah's father, whose name is Gilead. And Gilead's wife bare, bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house for thou art the son of a strange woman oh then Jephthah fled for from his brothers our brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him so what we are looking at is that when they grew up, the brothers disowned him. They didn't want to know him. I don't know how many brothers there were, but they're saying, you're not going to share in our inheritance because your mother is no good. You are our half-brother, but we don't recognize you. You come from not a good background, and we don't want nothing to do with you. So when he was of age, they threw him out of the house. But yet we just read, in chapter 1, now Je Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here we see, we are looking at his birth. Yeah. His mother was a prostitute. Yes. But then his father had other children mm -hmm. with his wife. Yeah. So he was a son, the, uh, a illegitimate son. Yeah. But yet, it seemed like the father took him in to the house yeah. and he grew up among them. Yeah. But when they all grew up, they and, um, and his siblings decided, no, we don't want to. So it was an outcast. So he was unloved by them. Jephthah, this is the man who became the judge over all of them. This is the man who became the leader. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, so he fled for his life because he realized if he stayed, they don't kill him. Because they hated him, they didn't want him in the family. So Jephthah fled to the land of Tob. I don't know exactly where that is in Israel. Mm. But while he was there, it said people came to him because people saw his ability. They saw something in this man. Mm. So people came to him. It says vain men came to him. But these are adventurers. People literally came to him because they saw something in his life. It's just like, you, you remember David, when David was on the run, mm -hmm. people came to him. Yes. When he was running away from Saul, yes. impoverished yes. people came to him and he trained them 400 uh, until he went to 600, that he had an army of 600 wow. strong men that he trained and these guys were just rather muffin. <laughs> <laughs> and he trained them. Mm -hmm. So no doubt, 
Jephthah, that's what he did. He trained these men. He trained them. And it was notable because in the time of need, they went for him. In the time of need, they went for him. His brothers. His brothers and all the elders. And all the elders and the leaders of that clan went for him. So it was not only the brothers that um, disowned him and, yeah. and, and took him out, threw him out. It was also the clan of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the elders, of, the elders, the leaders. They got rid of him. Mm -hmm. But when they were in need, they sought him out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. They sought him out mm -hmm. when they were in need. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us people might just throw us away yeah. and think we are rubbish. Yeah, that's right. Don't want nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. But in the time of need, people will swallow their pride right. hallelujah they'll humble themselves right. oh yes hallelujah praise god praise the lord, praise the lord. Yes. so we will look at his leadership ability and selection like i said you got it all right. on the paper number two is leadership yeah. ability and selection verse one the first clause tells us, no, Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. We are looking at his leadership ability. He was a mighty man of valor. Perhaps the brothers saw that and they envied him also, mm -hmm. like Joseph's that, brother. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And they thought, no, he's a threat to us. Mm -hmm. We need to get him away from us as far as possible. And we don't want him to have anything to do with us, our, our inheritance. Because if we do, he might take over. Mm -hmm. Because they've seen that there's something yeah. about this man. Even though his birth, he had nothing to do. You know, none of us, we don't choose our parents. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. no. We don't choose our parents. Mm -hmm. We don't even choose to come here. No. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a choice, maybe, and we see what this world is like, we say, God, please don't. No, 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 don't bother. <laughs> No, no, please, don't, 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 don't launch us into this world. <laughs> this world is too wicked, it's too bad. No, 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 no. So his background wasn't so good. But God put something in him. Hallelujah, that nobody could take away from him. So even though he had to flee for his life, he didn't hang his head down. He lifted up his head. Praise the Lord. He didn't, hallelujah, 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 thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus, you know, we have to lift up our heads, you know, we have to encourage ourselves, when others discourage us, we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord, praise the Lord, anybody want to say anything at this time, how are we doing for time? Yeah, we're doing okay. Um, I find it quite like amazing how the people that like cast him like through like drove him away, like um, they they were the same people who wanted his help mm -hmm. as well. That's right. That's so right. It's amazing how God can turn things around. That's what He did. Amazing, yes. Amazing. amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, you know, mm -hmm. you'll find that um, the very thing that God allowed the enemy to mm -hmm. use against you is the very thing that God turned into blessings yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right, we will continue reading from verse 4 of the same chapter down to 12, I believe. And it came to pass in the process of time. And it came to pass. Mm. Can we say, and it came and to it pass? Came and it came to pass. pass. See, time as a way <laughs> of turning things around. Yes, just wait, yes, just wait and see. Just, just wait, wait, just wait. Yeah. Just yeah. wait. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. you may be down today, mm -hmm. but just wait. Mm -hmm. God has a way of using time That's to right. turn us up, mm -hmm. put us all on top. Yes. And those who were once uh -huh. on top, Hallelujah. Yes. Find themselves at the, the bottom. Mm. 
and then they need the help yeah, of yeah, those yeah. that they trampled on mm. and discarded and mm. you know throw away and think no good, that you're no, no good. good you're just yeah. good for the rubbish heap yeah. the garbage dump mm -hmm. and it came to pass in process of time that the children of what Ammon made war against Israel mm. for 18 years the Ammonites oppressed Israel and the Ammonites are re relations of Israel, they are descendants of Lot. And when they came out of Egypt, that's the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea and in the desert, and when they were about to enter into the Promised Land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and Joshua is about to take over now from Moses, God instructed them not to touch the Ammonites because mm -hmm. God said yeah. they are your brothers. Yes. They are Lot's descendants. Yeah. He told them not to touch the Edomites right. because they are also Lot's descendants. Mm -hmm. Your brothers, the Lord said. Mm -hmm. So he told them don't touch them. He said don't touch Mount Seir because they are your descendants. Mm -hmm. They are children of Esau. Mm -hmm. so God said don't touch them. Yes. Yes. Don't even try to attempt to fight them. Mm -hmm. God said um, Whatever you get from them, pay them. Yeah, God says, yeah. pay for the water and the food that they give you. Mm -hmm. But God says, I will not give you no portion of their land at all. Mm -hmm. So Israel did not touch them. Yeah. Now we see the Ammonites. Some 300 years later, in the time of um, Jephthah, waging war against Israel. Mm -hmm. But you see, God uh, uh, did hand them over to the Ammonites, like he handed them over to the Philistines yeah. and other nations yeah. because they were serving their gods. Yeah. So God handed them over to teach them a lesson. Right. So we see now Ammon is coming, the Ammonites coming against Israel. And they had no strength or power to overcome the Ammonites who oppressed them for 18 years. And now they decided to to apply the pressure even more upon Israel. Mm -hmm. So the people now are afraid and they need somebody to rise up and to deliver them. Mm -hmm. So what they did, we'll read it, we'll read it. Verse 4, And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel, and it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of what Gilead, the elders of Gilead from the same tribe of Jephthah, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. They went to fetch him. They went for him. The leaders went for him. Mm -hmm. Who had cast him out? Jesus. They went for him because they need somebody to lead them and they recognize that he has a quality to lead them. Verse 6. Yeah. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, our leader, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And yeah. this is Jephthah's reply. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not you hate me? Did not you hate me? And expelled me out of my father's house? So you see, it was not just yes. the brothers, no. but all the leaders, they, yes. they got together in their yes. council and they said, yeah, he's yes. a trouble, he's yes. a trouble, he's yes. no good yes. for the family, he's no good for our tribe, yes. get rid of him. No but he remembered yes. what they did to him yes. and he's addressing it. Mm -hmm. He said, did you not hate me? And you cast me out, right. expelled me yeah. out of my father's, out of my father's house. house. Wow. And why are he come unto me now? When you are in distress. Ah, you see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You see? Why you come bothering me now? Why you come troubling me for? You didn't want me now. You're in trouble now. Hey, you are coming for me. Yeah? You didn't want me when everything was well. Now, now, now. Why are you come, come bothering me for? Deny him of his inheritance. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Denied him of his inheritance. That's right. Exactly. They did dirty on him. You treated him really bad. Verse 8, And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, yeah. <laughs> that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head, our leader, 
over all the inhabitants of Gilead. You still turn around now. Mm. The people who got rid of him saying, we want you to be our leader now. Mm. We want you to be above all of us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, if ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver me before, before deliver them before me, shall shall I be your head or your leader? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpeh. And Jephthah, yeah, we will stop mm -hmm. here for, for now. We'll continue. Mm -hmm. So we just looked at his leadership ability and his selection. We see that he was a mighty man of valor. And the people recognized that. And they went for him and they selected him to be their leader, to lead them in battle or get against the uh, Ammonites and to victory. Mm -hmm. Usually, God would select and then pick the leaders to be the judges. Like in the case of Samson, mm -hmm. even before he was born. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we see it's not God himself, by himself, selecting Jephthah as leader. We see the people doing it, yeah. but God is doing it, working through them. Yeah. Working through them. Because as you go down further in chapter 11, verse 21, it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over to Gilead. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, symbolizing that the Lord approved of Jephthah to be the leader over the children of Israel. The Spirit of God, Samson their choice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we have just looked at his leadership ability and his selection. I won't be able to go through all of it tonight. Mm. But the next what we would look at is his knowledge of Israel's history from the word of God. Verses 20, no, verses 12 to 28 tells us that he sent messengers twice to the king, to the king of Ammon, saying, why do you want to fight with us? Why? So the king said that, well, you took our land when you came out of Egypt way back. You took our land. So Jephthah was able to say to them from the word of God, the book of Moses, that we did not touch your land. What we took was the land of the giants and the uh, mm -hmm. Amorites. Mm -hmm. But your land, we do not take your land. So what you are saying, you're talking, you don't know what you're really talking about. Mm -hmm. We have not taken your land. Just like what has been said today. Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. Israel is yeah. the yeah. occupier yeah. taking yeah. Palestinian yeah. people's yeah. land. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was the same thing that was going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Way back then. Yeah. Thousands of years ago, the same thing was said. Yeah. But, yeah. but Jephthah knew the history, mm -hmm. and his history was based upon the word of God. God amen, amen. He did not come up with no theory, mm -hmm. or no political, you know, uh, political dogma, mm -hmm. but he based the right of inheritance of the land on the word of God. Amen. And that's where we base our right yes. upon, upon the word of God. Amen. Regardless whether people want to say, well, we don't believe in the Bible, well, I, we don't believe in what you're saying either. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We believe in the Bible. Hallelujah. This Bible was here before you. Yes. And when you're dead and gone, it will be still here. Yes. There's so many people trying to destroy the word of God, yes. but it's still here. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So our life is based upon God's word. Our salvation, yes. our deliverance. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise yes. God. Yes. Our rights yes. based upon God's word. Mm. It's not our um, United Nations no. give us rights. No. Yeah? No. And all kinds of human activists. But it's God who gives us our rights. Exactly. So exactly. he basically spelled out his rights unto them. And he told them, you are the one who have wronged me. I have not wronged you. Let me see if I can find that. Yes. 
verse 27 of 11, chapter 11. Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judge this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. You are the one who's sinning against me. You are the one who's wronged me. I've not wronged you. God is on my side. God give us this exactly. land. And God is a judge. And he judge between the children of Israel and Ammon. God judge between the children of Israel and every nation that is saying that the land don't really belong to them. God judge between us and those who don't know God. And saying that, you know, we should not be serving God. And we should not be standing up for the name of Jesus. We should not proclaim the name of Jesus. We should not teach in Jesus' name. We should not pray in Jesus' name. God be judge between us and them. Oh, glory to God. So he had a knowledge of Israel's history from the word of God. We must have our knowledge and our history based upon the word of God. Is what God says about us. His victory, his victory, his victory. Let's look at 32 and 33. Verses 32 and 33 of the same chapter. 32. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aroe, even till thou come to Minith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Eighteen years of oppression, and within a few hours, the oppressor, hallelujah, was destroyed. I pray the Lord. Hallelujah. And he was quite reluctant to go out against Ammon. Twice he sent his messengers saying, I don't want to fight you. But they were persistent to fight. And what were they fighting over? The land. The land. That were not theirs. And God granted the victory. That's what he said about the victory. Just two verses. Only two verses. He doesn't say what weapons he used. Like Samson used the jawbone of a, uh, an ass, a donkey, and slay. He slayed how many? A thousand Philistines. And it, it tells about Gideon and his men when they went to the pitchers yeah, and uh, the trumpet and confused God, caused confusion. And the Midianites that they rose up from their sleep in the night, half asleep. <laughs> and not knowing what's going on, they start fighting with one another and kill one over 120,000 of their own men. Wow. But it doesn't say anything more about this other than you subdue them. But other things are going on. Yeah. Other important things are going on. God just gave us two verses regarding the outcome of the battle. That he won it. <laughs> he won, he won, he won, he won. But other thing goes on, it goes on to tell us about the vow. We know about, um, anyone know what's about? Jephthah making a vow? Yeah. He made a vow? Right. He's most famous for this. But Not for his victory over the Ammonite, but for making a vow. Okay. Because when it, well, it's a massive twist, like kind of twist. Yeah, speak up. Oh, because um, he said that, if he, if basically, if he wins, God allows him to win. That, that whatever comes out of in his door, the first thing that comes out of his door, he'll make a sacrifice, oh, and yes. it turns out to be his daughter. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. And the only child. And the only, only child. child. And the only child. Mm. The Bible tells us wow. that when he was ready to go to war, the spirit of God approved him. Mm. The spirit of God came upon him. And yet he decided, I am going to basically make a vow to God so that God will give me the victory. Mm -hmm. Did he need to really make no. that vow? No, he didn't. No, I don't think he did. As the Spirit of God. That's right. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So what does that say to us? 
in us when we are desperate and we start to make pledges and make vows. The Spirit of God came upon him mightily, so no doubt would have been maybe happy and joyful, but still in his humanness, he's still thinking, I wonder if I'm going to get the victory. I wonder if I'm going to come back alive. So let me promise God something. And if I promise God something, it's like bribing God to do something for you. And if he does it, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him whatever. So no doubt, he was not thinking about his daughter. I don't know if he was thinking about a, a sheep coming out, or a goat, or whatever, to sacrifice unto the Lord. But certainly he wasn't thinking about a human being and his only child. He thought that one of his servants would be coming out. I don't even think he was thinking about a servant. I think he might be thinking more like an animal to sacrifice. Maybe a sheep, or maybe a goat, because that's what was commonly sacrificed unto the Lord, isn't it? Animals. Where you've got to be I know, yeah. Careful what you say. That's right. You say to God, yeah, yeah, when you're making a vow. Because whatever you say yeah. to him, is, is, whatever you ask for, is, yeah. that is what you're going to get, you know? Yeah. So the Bible says we must not be hasty to make a <laughs> vow before God. Yeah. You know? It's better, better not to vow. You know? Better, better not to vow. Yes, yeah, better mm -hmm. keep your mouth shut. <laughs> yes, I'm his friend. Uh, uh, Praise God. Yes. So let's look at it. Verse 13. And, uh, and read on. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, that shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Whatever come out of my house first, the first thing that comes to meet me, I will offer it up to you, God, as a burnt burn offering. offering. Lord have mercy. And then verse says 32 and 33, which we just read. So Jephthah passed over and God gave him the victory. He passed over to the Ammonites, he met them in battle, and he won. And it picks up now with the vow, 34, it can't think now with the vow. All this now is about the vow. Like I said, it's only two verses about the battle. Mm. Only two verses. Mm. And Jephthah came to Nisbah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels. His daughter, his daughter came out happy with timbrels, tambourines, and with dances to doing all kinds of styles of dancing. She's happy. Uh, the father come back from the war. He's not dead. He got the victory. Uh, dad. My, this was supposed to be a celebratory day, a great day of victory in his household. Because looking at his background and cast out of his own family. Now he's married, I have a family, no son, just one daughter. One daughter. And this was supposed to be the greatest day of his life, but it became the saddest day of his life because he made a vow unnecessary. A vow he never needed to make. We need to be careful. That's right. When we're feeling good or when we're feeling low, sometimes we say things when we're feeling low or when we're feeling high. We have to be, have a well-balanced mind and think it through. It, it, it's like when people that drink, you know, when they're mm. drunk, mm. they tell you all sorts and yes. promise you all sorts mm. in it, or keep yes. your belly full as well. Mm. <laughs> they tell you, I promise you this, I promise yeah. you that, mm -hmm. but then they forget yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> right, we'll be winding down soon, so we oh, run with it. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and uh, she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter, and it came to pass when he saw her that he, he rent his clothes, he tore his clothes. That was customary with mm -hmm. grief and yeah. fasting, yeah. and said, "Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art mm -hmm. one of them that trouble me and greatly disturb. Mm -hmm. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord 
that I cannot go back. I made a vow to the Lord and I can't go back. I can't take it back. And this is the response of the daughter. What a daughter. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord to do me according to that which had proceeded out of thy mouth, for as much as the Lord had taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. I've got a request, Father, one request. Let this request be done for me. Let me alone two months. In other words, let me live two months by myself. Let me go away two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows and my friends, me and my girlfriend, that we can go and have a good time. What she's saying, I'm not married. I desire to be married and I don't have no children. I just come into this world and I'm not leaving no inheritance. I'm not leaving no offspring. But Father, let me just ponder and enjoy myself for two months, for two months. And he said, go. And she went away for two months. And she went with her companions, her friends, and bewailed her virginity, in other words, not being married upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man saying that she was not married. And that really disturbed it, because she had ambition to be married. Mm. She had desire to be married. Yeah. And her life was cut short because her father made a foolish vow. Mm -hmm. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of, yeah. of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. So, she went away for two months enjoying herself the last two months of her life death sentences on her mm -hmm. knowing all, all that and she didn't even attempt to run away mm -hmm. she could have yes, yes she could have broken her word her, her pledge to her father yes. but she returned after the two months no she's going to be slapped and made a sacrifice mm -hmm. a sacrifice and she returned she puts me in the mind of Jesus. Mm -hmm. She puts me in the mind of Isaac. Isaac, yeah. Amen. Yes, of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Who did not run away. Mm -hmm. I, I resisted his, his father, mm -hmm. Abraham, mm -hmm. when he was told to offer him and mm -hmm. as a burnt offering. Yeah. And then we see Jesus also didn't run away, did not resist the cross. He went all the way. Mm -hmm. What a woman. Mm -hmm. We don't hear a lot about her, but a lot should be said. Yeah. More should be said about um, Jephthah's daughter. daughter. And it was it said that I don't know if the custom is still you know applicable today if it's still carrying in Israel, but during the time uh, of Jephthah, it says in Israel it was customary four times a year that young women would mm. wail and mourn over her. It just says that forty verse forty, and the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the oh. Gileadite, four days in a year. Four days within one in the year that they would oh. in honor of her. Uh, yeah. Yes. Wow. In honor of her. So he made a vow unnecessarily because mm. he really didn't need to make that vow. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And we're really coming down now to a close. Mm. We look at chapter 12. Chapter 12. <coughs> we won't even have time really to read it as such. Yeah. But chapter 12 tells us of a tribe called the Ephraimites. Mm. They are the descendants of Joseph, coming from one of Joseph's mm. sons, Ephraim. Oh, right. Ephraim. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Verse 1 of chapter yeah, 12. Yeah. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people went a great, 
at, at, at great strife. I read again. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And uh, when I called you, you delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that he delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore, then art thou come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim. Because they said, ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manasseh. Manasseh is their brother. That was another son uh, of, of Joseph. So after the victory, we see what he went through because of his unnecessary vow. His unnecessary vow caused the life of his daughter. So this was a low time in his life after that great victory. Now we see now the Ephraimites, another tribe of Israel that should be happy, they were sour, sour grapes. They were bitter because they said, why did you call us? Initially at the battle, we wanted to go and fight. And uh, he said, I trusted you before, but you, I could not depend upon you. So I had to go it alone without you guys. What's, what's the matter with you guys? And they threatened to burn down his house. Yes. Typical. You saw some people are bad minded. They say, oh, you start a ministry. Why you never call us? When they see the ministry start succeeding. Why you never call us right from the beginning? Brother Lloyd, why you never come call us? You know, we're here for you. Yeah. Same thing going on today. Watch out for the Ephraimite. You know why I brought that up about the Ephraimite? Because the same thing happened. The same thing happened when Gideon won the battle over the, Mish um, the Midianites. The Ephraimites came out and they accused Gideon. They said, why did you call us? They said the same thing to Gideon. Why did you call us? And Gideon said, well, you know, what you did was more important than us at the end. You, you went there right from the beginning, but at the end, you have done more than what we have done, you have achieved more. And when Gideon said that, they felt good. I never said anything. They were full of ego, they were full of pride. They came from the same tribe as Joshua, and Joshua was that last major leader. So maybe they had some pride and thinking, yeah, yeah, we are first. You remember Joshua? We associate ourselves with Joshua. And they feel that they must be called first so they can get the glory. That's the spirit of the Ephraimites. 